Mighty in battle, God, we thank you. We adore you. We lift your name on high. We give you all the praise and thanks. We thank you for your wonderful works. We thank you for who you are in our lives. Take all the glory for what you'll do again today. We declare this service open in your name. We thank you for what you did on Sunday. Thank you because we'll be glad we came to your presence again today. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. And let the church say, and if, let's be seated in his presence. I welcome those of you on site. And I also welcome everyone online. We trust that the word of the Lord will locate every one of us. And we all shall become the testimony of our dreams and desires in Jesus' name. Uh, today's prayer meeting, you know, I told you every Wednesday like this. We we'll pray. Take our time to pray. Uh, I'm going to continue from where I stopped at Shiloh. Why should we pray? Why we should pray as believers? Hallelujah. Now, so that we can catch the understanding of prayer, then we are going to pray prayer points from 11 different directions. And all the 11 prayer points will be taken from the life of David. Now, we all know that David is a man after God's heart. And we all know that David, in his lifetime, he was a man that God really lifted up. God did so many wonderful things in his life that me and you should pray about. We should covet in the place of prayer. You know, if you read your scriptures, you'll see clearly that the Bible says we should covet good things. When you see good things happening in the life of a Christian, now, particularly, the Bible says we should, we should covet spiritual gifts. When you see good things happening in the life of a Christian, don't envy that Christian. You can ask God to do the same for you. Hallelujah. And the God who does it for one can do it for all. Let's go back to uh, Luke chapter 18. That was what we studied at Shiloh. Uh, we only studied verse 1 at Shiloh. Why? We should pray. Why men ought always to pray. You know, let's go there. Luke chapter 18 from verse 1. Luke chapter 18 from verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, we didn't mention, we didn't talk, uh, share from the parable at Chilo. We only stopped at the summary of what Jesus used the parable to achieve. And what did he use the, the parable to achieve? He, he, he established it to us believers that prayer should be an always, a thing uh, that we should do consistently in our life. Prayer should not be something we do occasionally. And I remember I told us at Shiloh that when, what, when we say pray, prayer means What's prayer? Simple definition for prayer is when man decides to communicate with God. When man decides to communicate with God. And there are several reasons why, why man can decide to communicate with God. You know, man may not need communication with God if uh, it is not necessary. Praise the Lord. But I told us some reasons why we should communicate with God. Now, let me go into the parable so that we can pick one or two things before we begin to pray. Verse 2 says, saying, there was a man, there was uh, in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. Afterward, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because, look at that, look at verse 5, this widow troubled me. Can you see? Because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, least by her continual coming. I love that. She weary me. Because she is always coming, she will get me tired. 
you know, and uh, let's read on. Uh, verse 6. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them. Now, we see here that Jesus said, Will God not hear? Even we, his children, that cry unto him day and night. Now, it's to show us that, listen, if you have a fervent prayer life, there is nothing that will not be changeable concerning you. Now, a praying person can change anything. A praying person can change anything. Any tomorrow, Duragba could sing consequently, ye father. Now, I'm picking it from this parable. That even if the unjust judge decides to say, I won't answer her. She's troubling me. The judge will now think of her consistency, her coming continually. Now that's how Jesus our Lord wants us to pray. Hallelujah. He wants us to take prayer as a consistent thing in our life. Now, I, I told us on Sunday, I mean on Saturday, why do we pray? We pray because, hear me, we pray because there are unseen forces that likes to intrude into the natural events of man's life. Unseen forces. You know, we prayed about Asu Strike on Sunday. I was uh, talking to one of our, our sons. Uh, you know, I met him on the road and I was asking him about his studies. He said, sir, Papa, I'm at home. I said, what happened? He said, they have extended the Asu Strike by 14 weeks. Ah. So I quickly calculated 14 weeks. That's almost four months. So, Abby, if you add two more weeks to it, that would be 16 weeks. Four months. Now, let's start counting. Uh, we are in uh, May now, which means they'll be at home May, June, July, August. One semester is supposed to end when? In August. Those that entered last year are supposed to finish 100 level in August. They are supposed to start 200 level in September. Now, if they now resume in August, please, all those students that are at home, will they continue from where they stop? Or they will just pass them and say, okay, you have finished 100 level? Answer me now. Ma? They will? Emergency exam without teaching. Okay, they will tell them to go and get handouts. No, I want somebody to say something. Eh? They will start from where they stop. But what, what, wait, wait. What will now happen? Okay, they will now rush them. Okay, two weeks teaching and exam straight. Wow. Can you now see why we need to be very prayerful? Now, those children sitting at home now, some of their mates are where they are. Now, don't forget that they have the same job market. By the time they all finish school, they have the same what? Job market. They will face the same kind of interview. Now, those that are in private school that are still studying and they are still taking all the lectures, you know, by the time they go to the labor market to look for a job and they interview them, now, those ones that, are, that face strike, we they say, excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir, uh, during the strike, they didn't lectures. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, these are I'm sorry to say this. It means that we have demonic people running the affairs of our nation. Why do we need to pray? We need to pray because of all these intruders. Now, people that don't care, I don't expect them. If I heard that uh, uh, students of uh, uh, some students gathered to uh, to protest to protest today, that they will make sure that the 2023 election does not stand. Now, they are not talking about the students anymore, what are they talking about now? They are talking about election. They are getting ready for another election, so that they will be elected. If I, whether I, somebody was uh, sharing with me uh, three weeks ago. Now, I think it was one of our leaders, so one of our top men, was sharing with me, he said, sir, I can tell you the next president. Now, that's, I'm telling you something of three weeks ago. He said, the next president is not Tinumbu. The next president is not Toshibajo. I will tell you what happened. He mentioned the name of the next president. 
And do you know that I'm beginning to see, I'm not saying God spoke to me now, that the parties are gradually beginning to say, this is the person we want. Which means that some people must have sat down in their sitting room to decide the affairs of the nation. Now, that's one of the reasons why we should take prayer as something important. You know why we should pray in Nigeria? We should pray because, hear me, so many natural things that should speak for us are not speaking. For instance, we all know that our PVC is not speaking. We know that our votes does not count. Now, that's one of the reasons why, because people abroad, they wonder, why is it that people in Nigeria are always praying? Abroad, the systems that are established is working on its own. If you are putting in for a four-year course abroad, it is going to be four years. If you are putting in for a three-year course, it's going to be three years. Now, if, as it is now, there's ASU strike in Nigeria, let's just assume there's strike abroad, you will discover that the man in charge of education, maybe minister of education, will just tender his resignation letter. I'm sorry that this had to happen under my watch, so I'm resigning. Here, they won't resign. Even when the whole thing is collapsing, that's why we need to pray. Now, I'm saying this because people are watching us all over the world and they are wondering, why is it just prayer, 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 and prayer? We are praying because systems have ceased to work in our nation. So, Jesus, our Lord, said here, men ought always to pray. Jesus himself gave us prayer as the, uh, the, the, the rod by which we can declare the positive change that we desire. That's why I pray in the name of Jesus that the sons of wickedness shall not continue to rule our nation again in Jesus' name. We need to pray. Now, look at the scripture clearly. It says prayer should be always. Now, I shared an experience with you. We go to the prayer point very soon at Shiloh. Look at what happened uh, to, uh, uh, to Daniel when he was in Babylon. All the other leaders gang up. They wanted to cheat the king. They wanted to, uh, uh, by corrupt means, come to the top. But Daniel was not part of them. So he, that they were afraid that this Daniel, ah, with this Daniel, we cannot steal. With this Daniel, there is no how we can carry out our evil plans. So you know what they did? They decided that they were going to eradicate Daniel from the land. Daniel didn't have political power that they had. Daniel didn't have the, have the influence that they had. But Daniel had one thing. And what's that? He had the power of prayer. The Bible says Daniel will wake up in the morning. He will pray. In the evening, he will open his window and continue. To, everybody knew that that was what Daniel knew how to do. Adurani. He got to a point. They were looking for ways by which they will catch him. They couldn't find. They said, you know what we are going to do? Let us make a law against Daniel that has to do with praying to his God. If we do that, we will get him. They did everything they could do. They got Daniel. They brought charges against him. They were ready to cast him to the lion's den. I'm trying to establish one thing with this message. There is nothing you cannot change if you are a praying person. Praise the Lord. Look at how they judged him. They won the case. They celebrated they've won over Daniel. They even cast him to the lion's den. Can you imagine what they would be saying the day they were trying to throw Daniel into the lion's den? They would be saying, prayer, prayer, uh, prayer warrior. But they didn't know that the God of Daniel had gone ahead. Please don't joke with your prayer life. The, the season that we are in now is called a perilous time. We are in the end time. The season where the sons of wickedness are coming out. Look at the battle they rose against. Uh, they stirred up against marriages. If you preach about marriage now and mention God hates divorce, you just try it. Go on Facebook. Put your picture there and write God hates divorce. You will see the response you will get. And it is biblical. God hates divorce. But it's just to show you the amount of uh, 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 aggression 
of the devil against the purpose of God. We have to pray. Now look at what is happening among the youths today. We have to pray. Look at the way ritualists are, you know, ritualists are increasing every day. Somebody wants to do money ritual. We have to pray. If I, when Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint, he said it prophetically. This scripture is meant for our own generation. Men ought always to pray and not to give up. So that's why this evening, I've come up with this set of prayer points. I want us to pray for ourselves. Let's take this prayer point from the life of David. They are 11 in number. And we're going to take them from each of the covenant scriptures I brought out when I was studying his life. Let's start from the first one that I brought here. 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 10. Put it on screen. Let's see it. 1 Samuel chapter 19 and verse 10. That's prayer point number one. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel 19. Thank you, sir. Now, I read. The Bible says then Saul, look at this, sought to pin David to the wall with a spear. But he slipped away from Saul's presence and he drove the spear into the wall. So David fled and escaped that night. Now, if you read 1 Samuel chapter 2, no, chapter, yeah, chapter 1, when David, no, uh, sorry, Second Samuel chapter 1, when David was talking about uh, Saul and Jonathan, you know, after their death, David was singing. You know what David said? He said, the spear of Saul has never missed. Toba Jew, eh? Taseri? But kilo de toshe tasembi? That's why we are going to take our first point of prayer. And as I call this prayer, you pray it for yourself. You also prayed for your children. Say after me, hide me, O God. I didn't hear you. From the arrows of the wicked, in the name of Jesus Christ. I come again. Hide me, O God, from the arrows of the wicked, in the name of Jesus Christ. Jump up on your feet and let's begin to declare. Father, in the name of Jesus, I begin to pray for myself right now. Oh God, hide me. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray in the name of Jesus from the arrows of the wicked. I pray that you hide my family. Hide my children. Lord, from the arrows of the wicked, oh God. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Begin to ask at the end of the Lord, hide you right now from the arrows of the wicked. No matter how, how, how they shoot the arrow, no matter how they throw it at me, may it not reach me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Now pray, say after me, say, oh Lord, help me to always know how to escape their arrows. Help me to always know how to escape their arrows, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Uluwa, call me, begin to pray, to always know how to escape the arrows of the wicked, in the name of Jesus. Are you praying for yourself? I will always know how to escape, oh God, the arrows of the wicked in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed and amen. Please sit down. Let's look at number two. First Samuel chapter 18. From verse 22 to 25. It looks, it sounds similar. But we are going to pray it in the, another dimension. First Samuel chapter 18, 22 to 25. First Samuel 18. Are you there? 22 to 25. I read. And Saul commanded his servants, listen to this, old saying, Commune with David, which means talk with David secretly and say, Behold, the king has the light in thee, and all his servants love thee. Now, therefore, be the king's sons in law. And Saul's servants spake these words in the ears of David. And David said, Cement it to you a light thing. To be a king's son-in-law, 
See that I am a poor man and lightly esteemed. 25. And the servant of Saul told him, saying, On this manner spake David. 25. And Saul said, Thus shall you say to him, The king desireth not any dowry, but an hundred false kings of the Philistine to be avenged of the king's enemy. Listen, look at the summary. But Saul thought to make David fall. By what? By the hand of the Philistines. Now, don't forget, Saul had to go and speak to one man. You know what? Go and talk to David. Tell David that I love him so much. Tell David that I want him to be my son-in-law. I want him to marry one of my daughters. Go and convince him. So the man went to David. I went to convince David. And David said, ah, Sir, it's not easy to be the, son, the, the son-in-law of a king. Go. Do you know how much they will take for dowry? It's not easy. Oh. He went back to the king and told the king. The king said, don't worry. Go and tell him that he should just, what I need is not money. He should go and look for 100 men from the Philistine soldiers. He should kill them eh, and bring their foreskin. You know what they call foreskin? He should remove this skin eh, and bring it of 100 men. I don't know whether you have been in a place where they uh, um, uh, kill ram or goat and decide to skin it. I've seen it before. They will, they will pump the, the goat, you know, put air to look so big and they will start using, they will use blade to begin to peel the skin and they will peel it out. That was what David demanded for from 100 Philistines. And his intention was this. I will make sure that he falls into their hands. While he's trying to bring out the skin, they will kill him. I want us to pray. We are going to pray. Prayer point number two. Please come and off this fan. Number two. See after, may I not fall into the evil trap that evil people set for me. Evil trap that evil people set for me. Oh God, may I not fall into it. Are you said? You will jump up to pray. It's not a prayer you pray on your seat. That the evil trap that evil people set for me. Father Lord, I escape. See, may I not fall into the evil trap that evil people set for me. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Father, help me, oh God. Help me, oh God, that I will not fall into the evil trap that the wicked people have set for me in the name of Jesus. You know, some of us are just too innocent. Some of us are too innocent. Begin to pray for yourself. Lord, help me, O oh God, that I will not fall into the evil trap of wicked men in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Ragada basene, regada basata yara, ringo yara basene le, legada basata yanga daba. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Help me, Lord, that I will not fall into the evil trap set for me. By the wicked, in the name of Jesus, begin to talk to the Lord. May I not fall into the wicked, into the trap that the wicked have set for me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin pray for yourself. Look at the trap. David would have fallen easily if not that God saved him. Begin to pray, Ragadaba, Lord, you are my helper. You are the only one that can help me, Lord. In, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Ragada basi, le guri araba, shagada baskenile, ringada basanda yaraba, ringe debos, yagada baskanda. Lord, help me, Lord. May I not fall into that trap. Pray for your children. My children will not fall into the trap that the wicked have set. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Ragada basene, regada baskanda yara. My children will not fall into the trap. The evil trap that the wicked have set for me. Lord, for them, in the name of Jesus, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed and amen. Now, sit down again. Now, it, the, the third one is also similar to it. It's still the same Samuel chapter 18. We are going to read from verse 8 to verse 12. Let's look at it. Now, listen. And Saul was very wrought, and the saying displaced him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands. And to me, they have, they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more than but the throne? And Saul eyed David from that day and forth. Look at that. And he, you know what it means to eye somebody? To 
be looking at that person with a jealous mind. You can't see it on the face. He was smiling with David, though, but it was with a jealous mind. You can't see it on his face. He didn't appear. He didn't, he didn't show it. But David didn't know that he was just walking around with an enemy. Now, I read on. Verse 10. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul and he prophesied in the mix of the house and David played with his hands as at other times and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. Can you see? Different from that first one. There was a javelin in Saul's hand and Saul cast the javelin for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avo sorry, avoided out of his presence how many times? Twice. He avoided out of his presence twice. Verse 12. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. He was afraid. You know why he was afraid? How is it that this boy has been escaping my traps? I pray for you. No matter how wise your enemies think they are, may you not fall into their hands. He was afraid. Ah, how come? When I throw my javelin, it doesn't miss. He escaped twice. Let's pray. The third prayer you are going to pray. You say, oh God, make the attempt of every kind of soul. You know why I put it every kind of soul? There could be soul in your family. There could be soul in your place of work. There could be Saul where you are living. Who are Saul's? Saul's are those that are afraid of what God is doing in your life. And because of it, they are jealous of you. Saul's are always jealous because there are certain things they see in you that even you yourself may not notice. And they will be angry. You don't know why they are angry. They are just angry. That they are not even hearing noise of you and your husband fighting. It's enough. To make Saul angry. Now, the Saul in the Bible that we saw, what made him angry? Because people were singing the praise of David. And when you're calling David, ah, oh my head, that boy is good. That boy is go get her. Ah, that boy is great. Now, let us pray. Prayer point number three. So after, oh God, make the attempt of every kind of Saul against me to fail. In the name of Jesus, let your presence upon me begin to create fear in them. Because he became afraid of David because God's presence was upon him. Let me take the prayer point again. You will jump up to pray. Say after me, oh God, make the attempt of every kind of soul against me to fail in the name of Jesus. Let your presence upon me begin to create fear in them. Jump up on your feet and let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Oh God, I pray for myself. Right now in the name of Jesus. Let the attempt of every kind of soul against me begin to fail. Oluwa gbogbo igbese ti won gbe lo de si mi. Gbogbo Saul will be share me. Saul adugbo ti mo ngbe. Saul will be ti mo ti tin sise ani gbogbo igbese ti won gbe lo de si mi. Ah, Oluwa mo mi bori. Begin to pray. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Begin to ask that the Lord give you victory. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Ragada basanda, let every of their steps fail. Father, let your presence upon me continue to create fear in Saul. Let your presence upon me continue to create fear. Fear in them, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, are you praying? Ragada bababa se, shangada baraba, ringuri araba sene, basata yakada kedebos. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Thank you, Father. Lord, help me, Lord. Thank you for your help. Because I will not fall into the hands of souls. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And amen. We are sit down small again. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. One of the things that will make the enemies afraid of you, hear me, is success. What do I call it? Success. Look at 1 Samuel 18.5. That's why you must not be a failure. Make up your mind to succeed. Verse 5, I read. And David went out wheresoever where Saul sent him and behaved himself how? Wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Even the people that Saul wanted to use to to kill David. 
like David. David was a successful person. You are going to pray for the spirit of success. Success is a spirit. Failure too is a spirit. When people are possessed with the spirit of failure, put them in the mix of millions of opportunity. They will still fail. I, I used to tell some of our people, the opportunity you have, I, don't, I didn't have it. I was telling somebody, that you have opportunity. Your family members gave you money to start business. Your family member went ahead to, to give you money to, you know, to even get an apartment. Your family members went ahead. I see me, I don't have that. I don't have that. I have never enjoyed that in my life. I started working from secondary school. I was working and selling the class. Because there was nobody around. And I kept praying. And I thank God for God took me to this point. You know, at times when I, I was discussing with one man too, he has a very big business. He said, my elder, pastor, he said, pastor, my elder brother is abroad. He said, my brother said, don't worry, brother, my young brother, to help you to stabilize, I'll be sending you one, one container of goods from abroad every month. One container every month. One container every month. He said, and his brother was sending him container full of goods. Some cars, some tires, some spare parts, some motor engine. Every month, one, one container to support him. If you have that kind of support and you see struggle, they should hang you. Success is a spirit. Do you know that there are people that have that kind of support and they still fail? There was a time I wanted to go and buy paint in a company. They established that. It's a big company. I got there in the morning. It was locked. I got there in the afternoon. It was locked. The second day in the afternoon, it was locked. The third day, it was locked. So I look at one of the numbers on the banner. I didn't know that it's the number of the owner of the company. He has a Nigerian number, but anytime he goes abroad, he uses it. So I called the number. The person picked it. I said, I've been coming here. Almost one week now, every day, this place is locked. The man got angry. He said, I established that paint company and I gave it to my younger brother to be in charge of sales. Please, just stay there. I'll get back. So by the time the young man came, like 30 minutes later, he was drunk. You now ask me Yoruba language. Are you the one that called my elder brother? What I just know is that I pick one number and I call. The number now called me back and said, Sir, have they attended to you? I said, Yes, they have opened the place now. Can you imagine? Somebody put goods worth of millions inside that shop and put him in charge. He will close the shop and go and drink. Some people just have 100% spirit of failure in them. You are going to pray. pray. The next prayer, you say, oh God, please make me successful in all that I do, in all that I lay my hand upon. Father, make me successful. Jump up on your feet and begin to pray. Begin to pray for yourself. Ask for aid. Oh God, I pray. Please make me successful in all that I do in the name of Jesus. In all that I lay my hand upon. Father, make me successful. I cast out of my life every spirit of laziness, every spirit of failure in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Are you praying? 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 Begin to pray right now. I rebuke the spirit of failure in the name of Jesus. I call for success. I call for success in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray in all that I lay my hand upon. Father, make me successful. Ringadabase, shagadabaskenile, lingedebos, shagadabasandayara, rakayara baskandayara, rakayara. Are you praying for yourself? Dadura funai. Those of you that are students, pray for the spirit of success that will make you successful in your academics. Cast out the spirit of laziness now. Cast out the spirit of giving of excuse. Begin to pray for yourself. By legadabarabas. Linguri Adabase, Basata Yagada Baskenele, Shangadabara, are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? 
Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Badura funrai. Go where me a a a imele. Olu amole jina ko no ayeme. Rengada basanda. Bale gede bos. Emiti a sheyori. Oya wonu okami se. Wonu okami. Ongo botin bad dawale. Olu amumi sha sheyori. In Jesus precious name we have prayed and amen now be seated let's take number seven uh, sorry the next one that's number five is it six me mommy tells you it's in your five for that five for me we are in the diversifier only one nine fellow me now first summer chapter 18 one and two i love this particular one sister says are you opening your eyes or closing it uh, I open very well. First Samuel 18. Look at 1 and 2. He says, and it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was night with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Verse 2. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more. No more home to his father's house. Now, you know the prayer point we want to pray here? Take me to the level of blessing. That will make the blessed and mighty love to relate with me. Oluwa mu mi lo si ipele asiyori to ma mu ki awon alaseyori awon to ti saseyori ko wu won lati ba mi dore. Look at that. The Bible says and Saul took him and Jonathan too said he's going to be my friend. And why did they take him? Look at go to 1 Samuel 17. Is verse is in verse 54 4. Are you there? 1 Samuel 17. Where am I? Yes. Ah, it's not 54. It's in verse 57. 57. Show me verse 57. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and said, and brought him before Saul, with the head of the fi- of, who? of who? Of the Philistine in his hand. What was David's success? Goliath said, Obedani. Sherry, I want to feel it. Oh, le war, eh? So bad, ni There are some people that cannot call you their friend if you don't have some level of success. That's why I want us to pray. As he was holding the head of Goliath, the Bible says, and Abner took him. Let's go to the king, go to the president. Kabi is in to see you. And they took him before Saul. And the Bible says, Saul said, You are not going back to your father's house again. And as he was saying that, Jonathan was saying, You are going to be my friend forever. Your level will change. I didn't hear you. You know what it means to be to have a change of level. It is your circle of influence that determines your speed. I come again. Shuri, I want to buy to buy figure. Ika, lo ma kwenu bi onu e shima ja ya ya ja giresi. Your level of speed. When there are certain places you want to enter, there is someone that says, "I know the person, somebody there." I and my wife were talking to somebody. I was asking, that where is property in Ibadan? You know what the person said to me? It's an ogre somewhere. The person said, Pastor, when you are ready, come and see me. I will take you to where those things. There are people that have, you need relationship with them. But see, relationship has levels. So there are some people, if you get closer to them, they will put you at the mix of their driver. Some will not even allow you to come close to their driver. So you need Goliath said. What do you say? What do I say? You need who? Goliath's head. I'm not saying go and cut somebody's head. Goliath's head means that you must have some level of achievement that will make them to say, ah, come, you are, you are my friend. I want us to pray. Are you sad? Say, take me. I didn't hear you. Or let's put oh God in front. Oh God, take me to the level of blessing that will make the blessed and the mighty to love to relate with me in the name of Jesus. Jump upon your feet and let's begin to pray in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, I pray that you take me to the level of blessing that will make the blessed and the mighty to love to be my friend. Ah, in the name of Jesus. Your voice is going down. Pray, 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 pray. Father, take me to that level of blessing, oh God. 
Take me to that level of blessing, O God, that will make the blessed, that will make the mighty to, want, to choose to be my friend. Are you praying for yourself? Are you praying for yourself? Father, take me to that level, Lord. Father, take me to that level of blessing. O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed and amen. In 1 Samuel 17, look at verse 50. Put it on screen for us. Let's take this one before you sit down. 1 Samuel 17 and verse 50. The Bible says, So David prevailed over the Philistine with what? With a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Can you see that you don't need a big job to get a big result? He didn't have sword, but he killed the Philistine. With what? With sling. With what? With stone. Why? God empowered that stone. You know what you want to pray here? You are going to pray that the power of God, the blessing of God come upon your job. What do you do? Even if you are a student, you can win scholarship abroad, to study abroad. I know somebody that is a family member. A young lady. She prostate is, you know, God is a, 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 a scholarship to study in America. That was how she told her parents. Her parents said they thought that she was, they were joking. When it was time for them to start paying, they started paying for her. She went to abroad, America, studied, got a job, worked for a while, came back to nine and told her mom, I have come to pick my uh, as her, her boyfriend, Abby, according to you. So you know what they quickly did? They did emergency introduction. Emergency engagement. The family of the guy came to pay. If you are the family of the guy, will you not come and pay dowry? No, let's be sincere. Will you not come and pay dowry? It's not that she's coming from Wario. She came from America to pick your son. And they say you should come and pay dowry. Hey, Nilo, ya won't lapu a big ya won't get some dowry. They finished payment of dowry. That's how they travel. Now, how did she start? God empowered her, her academics for her. You are going to pray. I said it at Chilo. When you are 10 years old, you should begin to pray by yourself. Tochuku, are you now 10? Or you stand up? You pray. Okay, your sister is with you. But open your mouth and be what? Praying. Say after me. Say, you say after me. Oh God, empower what I do with your blessing for mega results. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Empower my calling, oh God. I'm a minister of the gospel. Lord, with your blessing for mega harvest, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Tell the Lord to empower what you do with his blessing. The blessing of God is, is an empowerment of his own. Begin to pray. Lord, empower what I do. Lord, and put your blessing upon my calling. All the students that are here, begin to tell the Lord, put your blessing. Upon my studies, O oh God, for mega harvest, O oh God, for mega harvest, O oh God, are you praying? Are you praying? Regada bara bara bas, bas se tene boskene, shangada bara bara, ringuri ada baskene le, regada basa ta ya gada baske, lenga daba, leguri ada bara, basa ta ya gada baskene. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed, and Amen. Now sit down, small. Your work is empowered with a blessing. In the name of Jesus. Let's take the next one. 1 Samuel 17. 22 and 23. You know the prayer you are going to pray? You say, oh God, let my preparation with, meet with the opportunity I need for greatness. Because somebody said, when preparation meets with opportunity, greatness is the result. Look at this. 1 Samuel 17, 22 and 23. Look at this. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army. 
and came and saluted his brethren. Verse 23. As he was greeting his brothers, and as he talked with them, with them behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David did what? He had it. Preparation. Meeting with opportunity. One of the reasons why so many people are struggling is because opportunity met them when they were not prepared. Ah, and I said, ah, and I wasted that money. Ah, and I wasted that opportunity. Ah, and I wasted that job. Ah, and I wasted that connection. Ah, and I wasted and waste. You know, there are, there are regrets I too have on certain things. There are certain people that I, I supposed to have collected their telephone numbers. I met them, but I was not composed enough to say, uh, can I have your number? Will I be able to reach you before they left? Now, what does it mean to be prepared? Be the best in whatever you are doing. So that when there's an opportunity at any time for you to render your service, people will be saying, ah, ah, this guy is good. Where has he been? That was what happened to David here. As he was greeting his brothers, Goliath came. And ah, uh ah, -uh. let's say he had come before Goliath came, he would have gone back like that. I want us to pray. Are you set? Are you set? Say, oh God, let my preparation meet with the opportunity I need for greatness. In the name of Jesus. Or oh, you jump up on your feet and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, I pray for myself. Let my preparation meet with the opportunity I need for greatness in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Are you praying? Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Give me opportunity in the place of my preparation, Lord. Give me opportunity in the place of my preparation, oh God. Begin to pray for yourself. 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 Begin to pray for pray for yourself. Le gada barabas, shangada baraba, basa taya gada bas, linguya da baraba, basa taya gada bas, kanda yada bas. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed and amen. Sit down. Let's take one more. We continue next week. Let's just take one. Now. Let me just pick one. Okay. First Samuel sixteen. 16, 18, and 19. Ah, I pray for you that the people that need to notice you for you to go up, may God open their eyes. First Samuel, look at it. 16, 18, and 19. Then answered one of the sons, the servants, and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in plain, and a mighty violent man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Look at 19, wherefore Saul said, Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. They were looking for instrumentalists at the palace. Thank God that somebody had seen him before. Until, a person, until you are seen, listen, until I am seen, the reward we desire may not come. Somebody need to see us. Yeah. Like today, I was just going through um, the internet message I've been preaching. And there was this particular person that somebody sent me a, a friend request. I don't go through my friend request page. But today I was just less busy so I saw it. I liked it. So the person now sent a message to me to thank me for accepting him as a friend. Ah, Banikilo special no Kadi Facebook friend. I now went to the person's page. I now began to see that this person has been a promoter of several great servants of God. Now that was when I myself began to appreciate 
my accepting the person as a friend. See, no matter how good you are, if you are covered, you cannot be rewarded. When gifted people, eh, hear me, are found, that's when reward comes. Are you sure you are here? Let's concentrate. That's the last prayer for this evening. This is the prayer you are now going to pray. See after me. Open the eyes of men and women. Okay, let's put it this way. I put it in two forms. But let's take the second one. See after me. Say, reveal me to my helpers. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Remove whatsoever is covering me from, from, uh, from them seeing me. Everything that is covering me, making the helpers not to see or notice me, Father, remove it. Reveal me, oh God, to the men and women that are very important to my lifting. Did you get all the prayer points? It's just one, but I framed it in different ways. The first frame is open the eyes of the men and women that you will use for my lifting for them to notice me. The second one, I put it this way. Reveal me to my helpers, oh God, in the name of Jesus. The third one, I also put it this way. It's still one. Lord, remove whatsoever is covering me from helpers in the name of Jesus. Then finally, you now say it under the same one. God, make my helpers to notice me. Are you set? Jump up on your feet and begin to pray. That's the last prayer for tonight. In the name of Jesus, my Father Lord, make my helpers notice me. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Ragada basenele. Open the eyes of men and women. Ragada basene. Needed for my lifting. Let them begin to notice me, Lord. Reveal me to my helpers, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, remove whatsoever is covering me from the sight of my helpers. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. 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 Regada ba 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 ba. Basata yanga da baskene. Ringu de raba. Shagada basi. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Talk to the Lord. Father, Lord, reveal me. Oh God, reveal me. Ringa da ba da ba da ba. Basata yanga da ba da ba. Lingu de raba. To my helpers, Lord. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, and somebody said, I have seen the son of Jesse. Father, let my helpers see and notice me. Let them see me, Lord. Regada basanda yada. Shangada basi. Every demonic cover over my life, over my ministry, over my marriage. Come on. Be lifted. Be destroyed by fire. All you evil cloud, you are destroyed by fire. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed and amen. Exalted Father, we thank you. We know you have answered our prayers. You are the God that made David great. Father, make us great. You are the Lord God that gave David victory over Saul. Father, give us victory over every form of Saul in the name of Jesus. No matter the kind of trap they set, we will not fall to their hands. Father, you are the one that made David to be noticed. Father, make us to be noticed by those that will contribute to our liftings in the name of Jesus. You said in your word that we should always pray and not give up. We have prayed this night. Thank you for answers. Thank you that we will return on Sunday with testimonies. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed and amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Be seated in his presence.